Hi guys, Crad here. In this video I want to talk briefly about the Boker Quaken, which is a collaboration with Lucas Burnley, a knife maker from New Mexico. So I'd been looking at the version that came out before the flipper model, um, both the orange one and the green version, um, featured a thumb disc and people were modifying it to remove a section of the handle right here to make it into a, a sort of flipper and I had thought about getting one of those for a while I didn't actually know that this version was coming out um, but I'm glad that I held off because when this version did come out it was uh, already the perfect version for me I would have sunk you know an extra hundred dollars or so into having the other one pimped in order to get titanium scales and uh, have the flipper mod done and I don't think I would have been as happy with um, the modified flipper as I am with this version of the flipper so um, and all this is a, a really uh, so this is definitely the superior version of the knife uh, in my eyes so design wise this is a, a very attractive knife it feels nice in hand. Um, the ergonomics for, for essentially being like a stick almost, uh, the ergonomics are honestly really great. Um, it feels surprisingly nice in hand. Um, the blade length is 3.5 inches. Uh, yeah, you saw my, my flawed opening there. I'll, I'll touch on that later. Um, the blade length is 3.5 inches. It's made out of OS 8 steel which is uh, similar in composite to 440C. Um, when I first got into collecting folding knives, uh, maybe middle school, early high school, um, it's been over 10 years ago, uh, a lot of the knives that I was familiar with at the time at least, a lot of the, the less expensive knives, and still uh, today a lot of the less expensive knives, a lot of the budget knives, uh, use this steel. And if heat treated properly, it's not a bad steel. Uh, like I was saying, it used to be a lot more common than it is uh, currently. Um, Boker, from what I understand, does do a good heat treat of this steel. And I, I've used this knife uh, lightly for everyday task and haven't had to sharpen it yet but um, being a, a relatively softer steel uh, it should be fairly easy to sharpen. Uh, one thing I really like is just the way that this the, the lines here look everything is just um, nice and smooth but still very interesting looking and really that that sort of describes uh, the entirety of the knife everything is smooth straight lines and uh, very uh, attractive. So let's get on to the, the flipping action. This is a, an interesting flipper. Um, most flippers sort of have the curve on the other direction, the way that you're actually applying the force. Um, this is a sort of protruding rounded off uh, flipper and it's it's okay. Um, the detent on the knife isn't bad and the smoothness of uh, the IKBS system employed by Boker for this knife uh, works pretty well also. I will say that um, my success in flipping the knife open uh, varies greatly. I, it's nowhere near you know 100% deployment. Um, for me personally, at least on this version of the knife, and that's something worth mentioning. Um, Boker is well known for having a lot of uh, tolerance variances amongst their knives. From what I, from what I understand, they're getting better, but uh, they've had some uh, collaborations with custom knife makers in the past that I've uh, wanted to look at, but a lot of the reports that I was getting, uh, say from the Rexford and the Monero, um, was that the quality varied greatly. So with this, um, the D10 is actually strong enough that it's a little bit hard for me to deploy it uh, by pushing in like a button, which is the way that I've uh, been told this flipper is supposed to be used. It's not supposed to be like um, 
the light switch style where you'll drag your finger down and um, you know try to activate it like you would turn off a light. It's supposed to be more like a push button where you um, push straight in and the blade will deploy. Um, the detent, like I said, is strong enough that that's actually a little bit hard to do, especially um, if your hand is a little bit sweaty um, because you're in a you know warm condition. Um, it's a little bit hard not only to grip the knife but also to put enough force um, onto the the flipper to get it to come open that way. I found that I've had much greater luck if I sort of hold it to the side and I um, drag the knuckle, the top knuckle of my finger down. Um, my success rate is much higher. I can usually get it flipped open that way. And another problem with pushing down like this, even when I when I do get it to come open, I've been manhandling the knife and now my hand's a little bit sweaty. Um, yeah, if I do get it to come open like that, a lot of the time, uh, as I'm pushing down, my finger will sort of stay right here, and then this part of the tang will come up and hit my finger, and the blade will not fully deploy. Um, when I when I drag it like this, my finger's uh, long out of the way, long since out of the way by the time that part of the tang gets there. Um, if I were to have anything done to this knife, uh, as far as modification-wise goes, um, other than, you know, I guess it'd be up to the individual if they wanted to do something aesthetic uh, with the titanium, such as anodize or heat stripe or um, change the texture or anything along those lines. I kind of like the clean look that this knife has, and I, I don't think I would uh, really modify it um, aesthetically. But I could see um, maybe adding some soft jimping, um, sort of big wavy jimping right here. Normally I'm not even a jimping kind of guy, but I could see adding a little bit right there might, might help get a little bit more grip to this, um, keep your finger from sliding off. It's like I was saying, when I'm trying to actually use the tip of my finger, um, I have a hard time putting enough pressure on it without my finger sliding off. Uh, I would also consider um, removing a little bit of material along here and sort of rounding that out <clears throat> just so it's a little bit easier to gain access to the, the liner lock bar here. Um, I didn't mention the, the liners are stainless steel. The actual cutout for it here, which my camera doesn't want to focus on. Uh, remains fairly thick and being stainless steel um, so you know, obviously it's going to be able to take a lot of stress right there and re uh, being stainless steel um, the actual lock face shouldn't wear quickly so yeah maybe just remove a little bit of material here to make it a little bit easier for my thumb to to get in there and uh, hit the lock bar to close the knife and all I think this is a, a very nice knife I have a great precision uh, zirconium bead on it, in case anyone was wondering. Um, for the money, I really like this knife. Thanks for watching.